we've got a little bit of a change. As he said, we're going to be Gumby here. Normally, I would be sitting at Cyan's little space rig here that ought to be somewhere in space and showing you things about bump stops and springs and how the, the system is working. Uh, over the last couple of years, it's kind of bothered me a little bit that by the time the videos came out, they were obsolete because the bills have come. I talked to iRacing since I've been uh, honored enough to be on the, the beta testing crew now. I got a chance to talk with Tony and Otto and a couple of the guys that I, I test with and got permission from iRacing to give you boys the very first head up of what you're fixing to get in new build. Okay? And the reason why I'm doing that is because if I showed you everything to, and talked to you today about what we do with the A-car, which is what this class is for, the A-car, here in a week, it wouldn't matter a hill of beans. The new build is going to reset everything. You're starting from scratch. Okay? Your setups, as of now, unless something changes, and you know how I racing is, there's two things you need to know, soon and change, okay? So the, the build will be next week, probably after the DWC race, they will not throw this on the DWC guys, because the build is gonna totally reset your setups. When you go into iRacing after the new build, your setups are gonna, if, the, if it stays the way it is right at this moment, your setups are going to have 450 pound front springs, 200 pound rear springs. Okay? Now your cambers, your casters, all of that stuff will still be the same, but when you go to start making your new springs package, there goes your, your caster and your cambers because depending on your springs as to what your cambers and stuff will be. Okay? So, there's some things that they've changed that you won't notice as far as the springs which I've told you. They've changed the way the suspension is read. Okay? Now the suspension is a, a little bit more of a flex to it. It's not one solid piece. The way the build is coming out, the suspension is totally redone for every car that I know of in iRacing. It's got a brand new suspension coming. The, uh, the tire is not getting an upgrade that I know of. If it is, it's been very minor. So it's, that's not going to make a big deal. But the total suspension rework is, as it affects the setups, is a pretty big deal because everything's going to be starting from scratch. Everybody's starting over. Okay? What I'm going to do, what I want to do today is try to give you a heads up, as give you a direction to go from what I've been doing the last two weeks. Uh, since the build got put in a place where they said, okay, there it is, go learn it. And the best that I can tell you now, and I'll use a little bit of the, uh, the B-Fix setups that I've gotten finished before I came here, uh, tire, tire pressures uh, are going to be a little lower with this new deal. Uh, you're going to want to use... I've, all but two of my B-Fix setups are using minimum right side tire pressures. And I'm also, what is, I'll ask you guys, when y'all are building setups or when y'all have got setups, what's been the tire pressure split, basically? About 10 pounds. I'm somewhere between 18 and 20. There are some of the setups that I've built, even on the A-car, that's using a minimum right side tire pressure, like at Charlotte, I believe, 52, I think, is Charlotte's right side minimum uh, per NASCAR rules. My left side's on my Charlotte set, which is really the, the biggest one I've worked on A-car wise. My left sides were at a 36. So I'm running a 36 and a 52 on my, on my tire pressures just now. Now that may change when I've really got telemetry a hold of it, but from a 36 to a 52 is a whole lot different than a 42 to a 52. And that 36 is biting hard, the reason why, okay? There's going to be also some changes in your horsepower. You know that NASCAR has shrunk the rear spoiler and took your horsepower away. So has Eric. He's worked hard on getting that fixed. And you can tell in the A car 
that the horsepower is gone. It's a little bit like driving the B car, power-wise. It handles differently, and you can tell that it's got a little more power than the B car. It's not as sluggish, but they'll, with driving the A car now, lifting that early, letting it roll, being careful on that throttle, if, did, you, did you watch Atlanta? Did you watch the guys run Atlanta this week? Did you hear them lift that much? Same thing. There's a couple of times when I hit a spring package on that Charlotte set, I wasn't, over, I wasn't under three-quarter throttle first lap. Flat out. And the thing's just biting. The, the chassis is really good. I have to give Eric a lot of credit, man. They've done a really good job on that chassis. Uh, now, the, as of right now, the spring setup is still 25 pound increments. May change uh, between now and then. I don't think it will, but they have talked about making it in 10 pound increments. So if it's that way when you get the A car, I know the B car has changed. The B car springs now are in 10 pounds, not 25. You don't go from 300, 325, 350. You go 3, 310, 320, 330. It's in 10 pounds. The front springs, the rear springs are still 25. All right. Now, the biggest change of what you'll learn setting up the A car is the bump stops are now gone. No more bump stops in the A car. Okay, Sprint Cup guys don't use bump stops anymore, which started this year, which I'll give iRacing another little shout out here. They're keeping up pretty well because when the Sprint Cup guys got rid of the bump stops, they went to something that's a lot more manageable called a shock spring. So now you're going to have shock springs to deal with. No more bump stops with negative packers. I never really understood what a negative packer was in any way, to be honest with you. I'm sure Eric could go above my head and explain it to me, but I never understood how you took a packer away from zero and went to negative. How, you, how do you get less of a packer when you don't have one? I, I, I never understood that. But anyway, now you have your, your packers are at zero. You still have your packers, which are nothing more than a washer that moves the shock spring up the same way it did the bump stops. Right? Bump stops were pieces of rubber, big thick rubber door stops. All a bump stop was. A one bump stop, two bump stop, three bump stop, and so forth. Right? Packer moved that bump stop up the shaft and down. So you could place where the packer hit, where the shot would hit the packer, where the spring would compress on top of the bump stops. Now you've got shock springs that start at a zero, no packer at all, and you can raise them up at different increments. I think it's like a 0.0125 to a 0.063, that sort of thing, up with packers. Your, your bump springs are now from, from 500 pounds per square inch to 5,000 pounds per square inch, moving up in increments of like a quarter pound or so per square inch. There's a lot of options. I mean countless options between left front and right front uh, uh, shock springs. There's everything from like I said 500 to uh, 5,000 pounds per square inch which you'll notice that on the super speedways you'll not want a lot of, you, you never wanted a lot of bump stop and you never wanted a lot of packer on a super speedway, right? Same way with the uh, bump springs, basically. The, the super speedway sets that I build uh, for Daytona and Talladega were at 500 and just trying to get that bottom, that thing to stay on the ground as much as possible, okay? So there's that part of the new build. Another big part of the new build, and I'm glad this is coming out after the build, because a couple of the guys that I've been working with that are on teams, 
beg me, Cater, please, please do not tell them about this part of the build. I hate to tell them, I, I got to, because I want you boys to be just as competitive as you can. What did you ever do with nose weight on an A car? Not no more. Not no more. Everything I have had with the A car to make it speed up, I've run anywhere from 25 to 40 inches of front nose weight. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 52 to 54 percent nose weight which is what the real guys use. They use a lot of nose weight depending on the racetrack. So, and the setup that I've made for Charlotte is, I think I'm running, I, I'll give you my front springs if I can remember them. I'm, I'm running somewhere in the neighborhood, I'm actually hillbillying the, or sorry, it's a southern term for running higher left side than right side front springs, hillbillying. Uh, I'm actually running like a 1750, 1775 front, left front spring, and about a 1600 right front spring, I think is where I'm at right now, but that may change a lot. And I'm somewhere in the neighborhood of a, what was it, I believe I'm somewhere in the neighborhood of about a eight, somewhere between an eight and a 1200 shock spring on both sides. And I'm still playing with the shock springs, trying to get that that splitter sealed through telemetry. So I'm not quite there with it yet. But the, the thing I, I will tell you is unless it changes, the, and it may change between now and the build, when you put bigger springs in to an A car or a B car, if you're starting out with a 500 pound front spring set, right, your ride heights are at, at uh, say 350 just for an example, and you put bigger springs in, the ride heights would shoot up. Now, the springs are being read correctly. So when you, if you see the new build and you put bigger springs in, say you put bigger springs in the rear because they're gonna be 200 pound rear springs and the ride height is safe set at a five, when you put those 800 pound rear springs in it and you see the ride height go down to a two, don't be shocked. You just, you've got to rework it a little bit backwards now because a heavier pound spring is actually shorter than a lighter pound spring. Uh, a 500 pound spring at this tall will have a 1,000 pound spring at this tall. The difference is, is a 500 pound spring has got coils this big. 1,000 pound spring's got coil that big. So it's a lot thicker coil, but it's a lot shorter in height. So when you put that bigger spring in it, it drops the rear end down. Because I, I know that because when they give us the set to start with, to play with, I turn my Charlotte car into Cheech and Chong. <laughs> to put them 800 pound springs in it, drop the rear end. As long as I was idling, I was fine. Give a little gas, shift the weight to the rear. Ain't that right, Gabe? The, the, little, the little steering wheel that you drive with the handcuffs on? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> But you put a little weight on it, you can drop that rear end. The good thing about this is, is putting the, finding those rear springs, knowing that you can drop that rear end. Now it's a little easier to actually set those side rails and that rear spoiler where you want it on the track in the corners. Now you can start playing with the heights. You just put a spring in it, drop the right eye a little bit. So you got the, the car and it's not quite bottoming out, put just a little bigger spring in it. Drop the right height just there. Give it a little bit more travel. Now you're starting to scrape the ground. Now you can start picking springs. So to me, it was making it easier to pick a spring package. Because I could, I could actually start using springs instead of spring purchase. Which I get my spring purchase set. I'm not a big fan of, of changing those spring purchase. Because now you're changing the compression of the spring. Okay, so now the spring's gonna react different as you're in the corners. Now if you can just keep the spring purchase where they are, change the spring to find the right height you need, now it's a little easier to do. You're not changing uh, the spring perch, the compression of the spring, you're just actually changing the spring, putting either more or less travel in it. So it actually made it a little easier for me. But I'm not sure they're gonna stay with that, so I hope they do, but I think Eric may have changed that before I left. But 
if it comes out that way, I just didn't want you to be shot. Now, if it's the other way, I mean, you already know what you're doing, dealing with anyway if it brings the ride heights up. So I wanted you to, to know what, you, what you're getting with that. Uh, like I said, the tire pressures are, I'm using a lot more split. Oh, the rear springs. With using that much nose weight, you know, usually we would run, what, 350 left sides, 500, 550 right sides in the A car to keep the spoiler out of the air, right? I'm using 300, 350 left sides, 1,000, up to 4,000 pounds right rear springs. Okay, and I think the right rear springs are either going four or 5,000 pounds now with those front springs going up to 10. Uh, there, there's a Charlotte set I was actually playing with that had a 2,000 pound right front spring, a 500 pound left front spring, a 4,000 pound right rear, and a 350 left rear. And the thing would just run all day long. But it had like 42 inches of nose weight in it. But that 4,000 pound spring would flat get up. Man, it'd do a good job. So the, the, the options for this now, with this new build, the options are actually fairly endless now. It's not so much in a box as it was with the new build. Uh, see, the nose weight, the way it drives, golly, other than with the lack of power, other than it being a little bit more like the A car, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, like the B car, it's still driving pretty much the same. With that little bit less forward, there's some times it's getting a little slick. Uh, I noticed it, even at Charlotte, uh, if I run 20, 25 laps, it was some times I was having to pedal it. Because without that spoiler in the air as much as it was, there's some times it was getting a little slick, which ought to make it pretty fun. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good challenge to try to f find a good balance. And I've also noticed that, oh, they, uh, Eric has also said that, that hitting the bottom and out the track, which is what we kind of got to do now with the A car, you got to make sure that thing is just bouncing off the racetrack to get the arrow right, you, you, it's going to slow you down now. Uh, hitting that splitter now is a little bit more detrimental to speed. So you're going to want to find that spot where it's hitting that, that shock spring and keeping that splitter a little bit more off the ground. You're still going to hear that splitter hit those bumps, like uh, Michigan, right there after the start-finish line. Dip, you'll still want to hear that little shh. And uh, Atlanta, you still may hear a few bumps because of how bad it is, but you're going to want to keep that front splitter off the ground just a little bit more with this new build, even with the nose weight. Uh, and it's going to be a whole lot more important as to what you do with your rear springs. That's one thing that's, that's not changed yet, or probably shouldn't change and won't, is picking the size of the rear springs compared to what it's doing to the front end on the straightaways. If your front end's coming up too high on the straightaways, you don't, you, it's usually because you don't have enough support in the rear end, okay? If you're sitting good in the corners, it's great. But if you're losing speed on the straightaways because of arrow, because when you come off the corner and the, the arrow of the car is pushing down on that spoiler, on that rear end, and it's bringing the nose up, well, there's your parachute. Having this side of air is not helping you a whole lot. So it's a little bit more important that I found with this build to have this a little flatter. So you may give up a little bit of that spoiler coming out of the air to gain it back with the splitter being sealed off. With the new build, I found the splitter being sealed off is a little more important. So when you're building your setups after this build comes off, work on getting that splitter sealed off. A little bit more uh, attention paid to that now instead of just trying to get the rear end out of the air everywhere. It's a little more important to get the car flatter down instead of either down like this or, down, or up like this. Okay? Uh, as far as the, set, the sets are concerned, and the way the changes are made, that's, that's about it. Uh, what I will tell you is what we've worked on for the last week and a half as far as getting the group of us together was drafting. I know a lot of you guys are, love the super speedways, right? The Daytona stuff. Uh, you're going to be real tickled. I'm not a big super speedway guy. I usually skip that week. 
I'll work on them next week. But the drafting practices that we've had, that we've worked with Eric on him doing the numbers on the draft, has been modeled a lot after Daytona. So you guys watched the, day, the 500, right? What well, was one of the biggest things you've seen of the guys that would try to side draft? When they would get up against that wall, somebody would come up to him and slow him down. Well, Eric's found it. You can actually pull up to that quarter panel and pull him right back to you. Because we tried it in all different ways. And it would have one of us come off a of turn two, get off that right rear corner, get that side draft up. And if I didn't go get him, if I stayed on the bottom like everybody does on that yellow line, he'd go right around me, pull it right down in front of me. So guys that are not here or don't know about that side draft, all you got to do is, instead of now, would, when you side draft somebody, you'd want to stay right there on their door, correct? I mean, you guys know the Daytona stuff more than I do. You want to stay right on that door. Now you want to get that side draft off that right rear corner and scoot up to that wall. Get away from him. Because not only are you helping or hurting you, you're also helping him with that side draft. So you want to get that side draft off of him and pull it up to that wall and get away from him so he can't get yours. But if he knows it, once he sees you come by him, all he's got to do is slide up there to you and right back you're coming. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun with that new draft. The, the, uh, the bubble that's right there on the tail end of the car, when you would come up and all of a sudden get to this spot and just couldn't quite get to him or it was either too easy and you just rammed the rear end of him, that's a lot better now. The draft is, uh, actually there was a lot of times that I could keep it on the floor and pull up to him and right as I got to him it would just tap him and the bump would shoot him forward. It wouldn't just glue like do like it does now where you just get to him and just stick. Now the way the draft was when I bumped the guy in front of me he would pop up about a car length ahead of me like they'd done in the, in the 500. So the draft's been reworked. And the draft, actually, to be honest with you, the draft was a lot of fun. We sit there probably 30 laps, didn't even know we'd run them. About 10 or 12 of us. The draft was a blast. It was fun trying to figure out how to get to somebody and pull them back to you without them being able to get away from you. It was a lot of fun. So I hope you guys like the, the new Super Speedway package that's coming. That, one's, that one I enjoyed a lot, and I don't like Super Speedways. I like that about as much as I do road courses. Uh, let's see, before I try to think of something else, you guys got any questions? Because I could sit here and tell you about the stuff that we're doing now and go through this like I've done the past several years, but, but to be honest with you, here in a week, it's not going to matter because everything's going to be different. You know, uh, I could show you how to do the springs, but the springs are going to react. You're actually going to use different size springs now. Uh, just using the B car, for example, uh, usually you could go to a, uh, a mile and a half track and use a 350 right front, a 475 or a 500 left front, set the ride heights all the way up and have at it. Be competitive about anywhere you need to be. Now, most of the fixed setups that I made were anywhere from 310 to 320, a couple of 330 on the right front. And I don't think I put maybe one set, one or two sets on the B car that was over a 400 pound left front spring. That left, the coil bind's totally different now on the B cars. So all the front springs are a little closer together. I was like 310, 320 on the right front, 360 on the left front, get, trying to get them both to coil bind at the same time in the corners. But I'm still using nose weight and one really big rear spring split. Uh, let's see, what track was it? Uh, Indianapolis. The Indy track for the B car is using a 250 pound left, front spring, or left rear spring and a 1,200 pound right rear spring. I mean, you would look, if you look at that thing, if you look at that thing, you would think it's gonna turn around on you when you go out there. The, but 
I, I used that 250 left, front, left rear spring to get it on the entry. I had a lot of trouble with Indianapolis getting the entry right when I was making the fix setup because it was just, it just did not want to turn the way I wanted it to. And when I'd pull the nose weight back, which what you would do to get the thing to turn, it was just unbelievably slow. Couldn't get any straightaway speed out of it because all that rear sitting in the metal and stuff just jacked that front end up and no matter what I'd done with the front springs, if I brought the front springs up where they'd coal bind later, right, give it more travel, like a set of a 320, use a 340 right front spring and a 380 left front spring to have more travel for it to come down in the straightaways, when you got to the corners, it'd dig into the track. So there's that balance I had to find between what I was doing with the rear springs and what I'm doing with the coal bind on the front springs. Same thing with the A car. It's finding that balance of what I've got to do with the rear springs to keep the front end from digging into the racetrack and still support that rear end up to where you're not bringing the splitter up off the ground so high that the, you're causing that arrow drag that you would have if you had this too high. So, so the B car and the A car are, a lot, are very similar to that in that aspect. So as far as I know right now, chassis wise, you guys have got a, a good head start. Oh, I will tell you, if you want to write this down, there's a website. That, and it's the only one I found that's anywhere near accurate. It's called, it's B U M P S P R I N G, singular, bumpspring.com. And it's a very simple site. It's the actual manufacturer of the bump spring, of the shock spring. And it, you, it's got a, the home page of it, it's got a little reading that you can do on the front. I've actually got the paper out in my motorhome. But instead of printing all that off and stuff, you can, it's a whole lot easier if you, you can just go online. You ain't got to you know, worry about keeping a whole bunch of paperwork with you. But it's bumpspring.com, and it'll, it's actually got uh, the homepage. It'll tell you what the shock spring is, and there is a how to set up link on that page that will tell you what their recommendations are as far as spring rates to set up the, the shock springs. But the, the trick with that site that uh, from my research is, is that it's using soft spring setups, which is what a lot of guys do now. Uh, I know a lot of guys swear by those, those B car setup front springs on the, on the A car, the 350 pound springs, the 400 pound springs up front, and it works great for them. Well, this thing has actual what, what spring, what bump spring to use depending on your spring rate and it even gives you a mile and a half flat track, gives you some options as to what, depending on what, what track you're at. But they're talking about strictly soft spring setups. So if it's, if you start finding some advantage with the bigger springs, you're going to have to uh, transpose it a little bit. So if it tells you to use a 500 pound bump spring with a a uh, 400 pound spring rate, if you go up to a thousand pound spring rate, you may have to come up to a 2,000 pound bump spring. You, know, you may have to figure out that, that trans, you know, it's transposed a little bit between what you're using and what the, the site does. Because they are talking real life, it's not our world. Which as close as iRacing has gotten, our world still is our world, it's not the real world. So there are some little areas there that you need to, because I was talking, I don't even remember who it was I was talking to that drives a real late model car. And he was asking me how he could get his late model set up to work in iRacing. And I said, figure out what the late model setup is in iRacing speak. So if you ever hear somebody tell you what their real life setup would be and you put it in your iRacing car and it just doesn't work, well, it will work it's just that iRacing translate what that is differently than what real world does. So a real life 500 pound spring may act a certain way on a real race car. Now iRacing may need a thousand pound spring to act the exact same way. So iRacing translates that real life car to a thousand pounds instead of 500 pounds. So you, now you just need to find that transpose where you transpose what real life means to in iRacing in our world which is very similar because I've talked to a couple of guys that actually work on the cup teams and they've actually got some setup parameters from them and tried to make them work. 
And that's what I've had to do with theirs, okay? Well, if they're telling me they run a, a six and a half degree left front cam caster at New Hampshire, what does that mean in iRacing? You know, and then go find out, he'd tell me what it would feel like, and I'd say, okay, well, let me go make it feel that way. With, and it turns out that feeling that way with a six and a half degree in real life means I have to run a 7.2 degree in, in uh, iRacing. So 7.2 in iRacing is six and a half in real life. So there's where that, that mixture between iRacing and real life comes. So it's not that iRacing is wrong, it's just that's how they record what real life is. So. Uh, I think I've about filled you in on what the new build's going to be. Now, I can't tell you, I can't give you a feel. And one of the terms of allowing me to talk to you about the new build was not showing you anything. Because <laughs> I asked them. I said, can I show them the garage? Can I bring up my Alpha and, and let them see what the garage looks like? No. Okay. Then I'll just talk about it. So as much as I'd love, because I told him I can just give him screenshots. Nope. Eric was very particular, and I love Eric. I, I guess you guys have seen Eric Hudak's who I'm talking about, right? Eric is a brilliant man. The man's just brilliant. But you, you have to talk to Eric some, because he's very direct. <laughs> so it, a lot of times if I would... Like if somebody would ask me and if it was my option to say, hey, can I show them some pictures? I said, no, nah, I'd rather you not do that. Just, you know, let's just keep that to ourselves. And when I asked Eric, said, can I show him some pictures? No! And that was it. <laughs> and he's not being mean about it. It's just, you know, he's just matter of fact about it. But the, man's, the man knows his stuff. That's, iRacing's done a real good job by, by getting Eric to do this, man. The man knows his stuff. Just sitting and listening to him talk about it is just, I've had smoke come out of my ears, just trying to keep up. But the, see I've told you about the drafting, the ACAR springs, you've got a good idea now of what's coming so it won't just totally blow you away and I, I, I hope, at least not from the crowd in here, I hope I don't open up the A forums and start hearing how the car's broke, because it, it ain't broke. But the, uh, the setup, the parameters, You've got a good idea now of what it's going to be. Uh, and I'll tell you like I do at the end of all my stuff, man. If, just because we're not here, you guys know my name. I am a PM away. If you ever need, if something ever throws you, don't be afraid to use it. I get, I wake up every morning to somewhere between 20 and 30 PMs that I'll spend a half hour, 45 minutes just answering PMs every morning. And to, to be honest with you, I love it. I really do, because I know somebody's gonna, you know, somebody's gonna benefit from and make their time at iRacing a whole lot more enjoyable. You know, so and I'd rather do that than than win races anyway. It's a whole lot more fun. So don't be don't be afraid to don't think you're bothering me. Don't think that you're. You know, that because I get 25 or 30 p.m.s every morning, don't think that you don't want to add to it. Be my guest, man. That's what, I'm, that's what I do. If you guys had you run into any sense, if you just say, it, what would this spring be better than that spring? Just it doesn't matter. Just shoot me a p.m. man. I, I, it may even take me a couple of days to get back to you. Don't feel like I'm ignoring you because sometimes 20 or 30 is a light morning. I've had mornings where I've ha actually had people have to send me emails saying, dude, your, your box is full when it was empty when I went to bed. So, so just don't be afraid of it, man. If you've got a question anytime, please feel free to send it to me. Let me know, especially even here. You know, the days that you've got me here, if there's something you need to know, catch me around here. Man, I'll sit down with you. So is there anything, any questions you guys got about anything? Go for it. Current build versus the new build coming out. Is Caster still your friend for rotation? Is what you, you talk about a 6-5 split. Yeah. Uh, I'm using the fl on the flatter tracks that I've played with, I'm using more left front caster than I am right front now, 
which is not a big different, not a lot different from uh, previous builds. I actually got that idea from Joe Nemechek because uh, I actually got a chance to talk to Joe one time, and Joe said he run. He told his guys he wanted his left front caster as far forward as he could get it because he wanted that thing just leaning into that corner all he could get. He run like a eight degree left front caster at New Hampshire. So that kind of got me thinking, well, I wonder if I can reverse that caster. And it helps some, you know, but uh, my Milwaukee cars are, the casters are hillbilly on the flatter tracks. But the, uh, the high speed stuff, I'm using lower casters and traditional, usually in the neighborhood of a, a four degree left front, five degree right front. But even at that, it's, it's very driver uh, preference. You're not, it's not, there's no magic number. You know, at Charlotte or Atlanta or at any of the mile and a half, there's no magic number to set the casters, now your car's ready to go. Because you may love the way a four and a five feel, and the steering wheel may be just too light for me. I may want a five and a half and a six and a half, just cause the steering wheel's heavier. It gives me a little bit more resistance in my turn. So there's no magic number, but I'm more conventional everywhere except the flatter tracks. So I'm a little bit more left front than right front. On the, the flatter the track, the more left front I'm using just to get the car to cut to center. That good? Certainly. Anything else? All right. I know this is about the, the A car, David. Yeah, go for it. But uh, the B car um, seems like it's an inch split between uh, left front and right front now. Mm hmm Is the A car going to go to that, that scheme? So in other words, if I wanted to, to be flat on the splitter on the A car, on the B car, it seemed like I got to be around a, a 450 on the, on the... You're talking about ride heights? Yes, sir. Okay. The, the B car, with it being a coal-bound car, uh -huh. your, right, your front ride height static, sitting on pit road, which is what you're looking at in the garage, the car sitting on pit road static with no arrow pushing down on it, you're going to be a little closer to even. But if you've seen any of my videos, you've noticed that up till now, I, I've been, you know, it's been one of my little setup things, making those uh, B car setups even on the front end. You know, within say a five six seven and a five six eight, never higher left side than right, never, because you're not turning right. Uh, you're turning left everywhere, so you'll want a little bit more right front ride height. So the car, when it goes into the corners, it's got a little more room to set down flat. Now with the B car, uh, with the fixed setups, I'm actually a little higher on the right side than left's now, uh, because of the way the chassis is now and the way the coil bind is with the new springs. I'm, my telemetry is showing that I'm rolling over some. And actually there was a couple of tracks I never could get that out of it. And I'm not sure if it's because telemetry was telling me wrong or I just didn't find the right combination. But there was a couple of times that the, uh, that the B car looked like on telemetry it was rolling over a little bit. That the left side was picking up a little higher than it should. But the car handled great so I didn't mess with it too bad. But with the A car now you're going to want a lot of higher right front. You're, I mean I'm running like uh, with this new setup, you can get those front ride heights down into the twos, actually. So I'm running like a 280, 290 left front and a 370, 380 right front. I'm giving a good inch or so of travel for the corners. But it's not quite as drastic with the B car. You'll still be close to even or say uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a 560 uh, left front, 565 right front, 563. So don't be so don't be so to, so anxious about changing cambers or or anything to even just to even out your ride heights. Just make sure it's a little higher on the right front than the left front. Okay. And with the new build are the, the spring package going to be close that we can tweak tweak in the B car or both A -car. A -car. the A car. Yeah, the spring packages won't be a lot won't be far off. Uh, I mean, from what you're running now, if you say you're running you know five thousand pound front springs now. You can still run them uh, and still get some good success because I've, I've noticed the bigger springs I put on, the lower I can go ahead and set the front ride heights. And then I can adjust those shock springs. The shock springs I think you guys are really going to like. They're a lot easier to adjust than those bump stops and will react a lot more consistently. The car will stay more consistent throughout the run with these, bumps, with these shock springs. Yeah, Dave. You know, my question is uh, shocks. Are shocks 
minor adjustments in shocks going to make a little more difference than that? The, the shocks have been worked some. Yeah, there's a little bit more of a rebound, uh, and there's a little bit more of a rebound and bump difference. Much as I hate to say it, I'm still using a lot of 32s. Yeah. I would love, I would love for the shocks to react better. I really would, but. No, nah, not not. You may notice a. Yeah, yeah. You may notice. You may be able to find the biggest the biggest change as far as shocks are concerned is going to be about the same as what you have now. If the thing is just flipping you off, coming off the corners, bringing that left rear rebound will help it. You know, if you're getting that lace loot exit, lowering that left rear rebound, still the same thing. And you're still getting about the same feel out of, you know, changing your rear bumps or your front bumps. It, the, the feel's not changed a whole lot with the shocks. I've talked to Eric about that and he's, he said that it's just, they just have not figured out how to make those shocks actually act real shocks. But it's nothing to do with the shocks, it's something to do with the sidewalls. It's how the sidewalls are calculated. Said if they could ever get the sidewalls exactly right, then the shocks would probably start coming around. So. Um, to add or to ask a little more clarification on the uh, drafting and the, um, that, is it the those effects not just on super speedways? Are you going to see the mile and a half? So are going to be able to make a difference? You know what? That, get somebody like loose by getting it nice and tight. Yeah, that, actually, that's a good question, and I'm not too sure because we we've been working so late in this build trying to make sure that the super speedways were as close to accurate as possible. Uh, I never got a chance to do a lot of testing at the mile and a half site. So that's, I think we'll all find out, you know, come come new build about that one. That's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, if it, if, it, if it has any different effect at all like it does the super speedways as far as sucking up, right? Then there should you should be able to play around a little bit by sneaking up and then popping that that hood out there and getting him that way. So hopefully it does, but I hadn't had any chance to uh, to say. And oh, one other thing, why made me think of it? Our distance is about almost a second and a half on the super speedways. You can be a second and a half back, man, and you're coming. And I mean, you're coming hard. They, they, we tested that, got about a second, 1.5, 1.6 back, and then let him put it on the floor, see if he could catch up. And by the time he got to me, man, he was gone. Shoom. He had a head of steam. And if I didn't go up there and grab him, man, nothing I could do. That slingshot's a little more pronounced, which I, I was thrilled with. Was, we had a blast, man. We really did. Anything else? Sir? Yeah, as far as I know, it, well, right now, I'll tell you what, right now I'm going to tell you it's the A car. But I'm thinking it's universal. So it should be truck, yeah, there's the man that would know more than me, Tony. So it should be universal. A car, B car, truck, all the super speedway, the oval stuff should be ready to go. So it'd be, actually, I, it, it may even act a little bit differently depending on the car you're in, especially the truck. Maybe a little bit different with the truck, but you'll still have like the second and a half. You still have the side drafting, but it may feel different just because of the way the trucks, you know, made. But yeah, it should be ready to go, man. And I hope it's as fun as I thought it was. I figured it'd be a real blast to you guys that love the super speedways because I'm not a fan of them. So I mean, if y'all guys love it, man, y'all y'all to really love this, sir. When you need more nose weight now. Moment. That's what I'm using more nose weight, yes. So once you get the handling like you want it, where are you finding your speed? Where are you getting more speed at? Because I think what I've learned from your other videos is you move the nose weight to the rear. Exactly right, because you would because the way the chassis was and the way everything was made without using nose weight, you wanted to keep that spoiler that uh, spoiler out of the air. That was the biggest reason for keeping the, the nose weight down because it just didn't react right to the chassis. You know, it, it helped the car rotate and pivot in the center and would get the spoiler out of the air. Now, if you get the spoiler out of the air too much, splitters cause an arrow, which it hadn't been doing as much before. Okay, because now, now that there's, a, and instead of this being one solid piece from front to back now, there's a little bit of a flex to it. So now this thing is popping up more, right? So it's, it's causing the same thing as putting too much splitter in the air. 
So now nose weight is actually going to help your handling. Instead of having the car with, with as far back as you can get it, which is in the center by NASCAR rules, you know, 50% NASCAR rules, instead of having it there to make the car pivot, you can use these big rear spring splits, make the car pivot, and put the nose weight in the car and it's not tearing up the tires, it's actually making the car handle better and it's keeping the splitter seal better. And also, if you've ever driven a car just playing and put some, put 15, 20 inches of nose weight in it, the handling is so much better. Now you can really get one to feel good to you, it's like it's Charlotte and Atlanta with some nose weight in it, the car feels a lot better. So there's, now there's, for a lot of us guys that like Conti says in his little video, sets up those cater tight setups. Those no ways help, man. That's gonna help us out some. Well, I appreciate you guys coming in. I hope the new I hope the new build does good for you because I, I honestly I'm kind of happy. I'm I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to to you guys getting a hold of it and being able to play. I'm looking forward to seeing what the forums do.